Y'all, you, know, you know about Kennington, it's a little rough out there. But there's a lot of good people that are just messed up out here. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, we, we were brought up in a rough life. So, our, our reward is drugs. Like, we turn to drugs to uh, block all the roughness of our lives from coming. My story was uh, was actually born in Fishtown at eight years old, then moved to Kensington at eight. Lived at uh, G and Madison. Um, pretty rough, like mom and dad were junkies. So really, my father was my older brother who passed away. So. And uh, he's the one that showed me the streets. So I just, at eight, I ran the streets with my brother. We had to take care of ourselves, get food. We took care of our brothers and sisters. Like, it was, we really did take care of our brothers and sisters, cook for them and everything. Cause mom and dad were always getting hot. So it was like, Kind of like in, inevitable, like we're we were doomed from the the start, I guess. I don't I don't know if doomed from the start, but due to repeat what our parents did. So basically, is is what it is, and I don't know. Kensington now is so different. <laughs> you got people that ain't even from here; they just get stuck here. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, but basically my, my life has been drugs, man. It started from weed to coke to freebasing when I was a kid. And then they started the Ready Rock. And I did pills and uh, it just escalated. I did heroin, but I couldn't do the heroin like that because uh, the, when it turned fatty, I, I kept on dying. Every time I did it, so now I do uh, now I do crystal meth. It helps with everything. To me, it's like my, my uh, it's my the drug I need for the PTSD that I got. You know what I mean? It helps me be me. And people don't think that that's true. Like that's not gonna help you be you. Listen, if I wasn't on meth right now, I wouldn't be able to talk to you right now and tell you this story. And that's the way I feel. I don't know, it's uh, it's kind of messed up in a way, but it's life, man. That's it's what, I, what I had to go through. I had to be a man at eight years old. So I had to put up, I had to put up my, my little kid shorts and Put on my man shorts. And that's basically like, and not a lot of people like have the same story as me, but it's damn, damn near close to that in Kensington. Of course, back, back in the day when we were kids, there wasn't nothing like there was today. Like we used to get beat with boards and, and bats and, Hangers. And that's why we were so like, I guess defiant. And we showed no guidance, no morals. I had to learn that by myself on the street. Teach myself how to respect other people. Got left back in the third grade three times. Then they put me up to seventh grade and I didn't know how to read. I was dedicated and I, I got into the books and I got into the dictionary. I underlined words that I didn't know. Looked them up in the dictionary, wrote down the definition, learned that word. So I basically taught myself my I guess street smarts or book smarts. 
I definitely taught myself my street smarts, so, uh. though. And I just wish my brother was around so he could tell his story, too. Pretty much the same. Because, like, like I said, he was like my dad because my, my parents weren't really there. My dad, my dad had cirrhosis of the liver. Um, had an operation and died on the hospital bed. Well, went in a coma and he couldn't come out. We used to drink on the corners every day. We used to sell crack and dope on the corners every day. Um, I mean, some people might say that we kind of did this to Kensington, but I, I don't know. It, it's, I don't know. I don't know exactly the time, but it's like before the pandemic, a little bit before the pandemic, when they was looting out here and everything. Um, had the National Guard out here. They was on every corner from K&A to Somerset, well, Needle Point Park. And they literally on every corner, like well, every store with their AKs in their hand. And they couldn't stop the, the rush of people coming to get drugs. What are your struggles that you're having now currently? It's where I live, I'm homeless. Uh, got no, no place to go. I used to have money, used to work. I had houses, I had two houses, I had cars. I had, I had things. And and now I don't know. It's I just I guess from looking back on my my childhood, I just I don't know. I get high to forget about it, to hide the pain. Uh, I used to smoke crack. I don't smoke crack no more. I used to smoke crack when I first started, when I was out there on the streets, and I would smoke crack after crack after crack after crack. I don't smoke it no more because it's not the same. Um, it's not not the same coke. Now, meth is like crack on steroids. Yeah, that's the only drug I use. How much do you spend on it, buying it every day? Ah, uh, not much. Probably about ten dollars, twenty dollars a day. I shoot it and smoke it. Um, just keeps you up, keeps me alert. Aware of everything that's going on around me, like, cause you don't know what's going to happen down here. Like, anything could happen. Somebody come up with a gun, shoot you in the head, and you don't even know it. So I, I'm always on the alert. My brother got shot in the chest. My other brother got shot in the head. My other brother got stabbed. Uh, my brother got shot in the head. He got grazed. They were shooting at him, and he ducked. If he didn't duck, the bullet probably would have hit him, but he grazed his head. He got a big ass scar on his head. My other brother was doing a little something and got shot in the chest through gunfire. It was going back and forth. And he got rushed to the hospital. He almost didn't make it. It was uh, like an inch away from his heart. And then when they took the bullet out, a bubble blew up in there. And if the bubble would have exploded, it would have stopped his heart and everything. So it had to go back in again. And they had to take 33% of his kidney and all types of stuff. But he's still up and pushing. He's good. He got out of the neighborhood. He moved up the Northeast with his family. Yeah, I got one daughter. She's in jail right now because when she's out, she's down here selling drugs. Can't stop it. There's nothing I could do. If I, if I do what I wanted to do, I'll be arrested. Like I said, back in the day, like when we, when we grew up, it, it was totally different. Hey, guys, how we doing? Hey, how you doing? He's just doing an interview, that's all. What do you do for work? Um, I'm a carpenter. I'm a carpenter. I do sheetrock, paint. I do all types of little stuff. Um, 
I just lost my job at a pizza shop doing dishes. Cause I um I do meth and I have no place to go, so it's hard to lay my head somewhere where I could be robbed at any time. So I try not to basically go to sleep. And if I go to sleep, I try to find places like houses, secure places where I know I'm safe. So, cause you fall asleep out here, you'll, you'll wake up naked. Like literally, shoes off your feet and everything. That's how it is. Uh, what keeps me going every day? The math. <laughs> That's what keeps me running. Because when I don't have it, I don't feel like doing shit. It's like I'm, I need it to function. They say there's no withdrawal symptoms to it, but I think that's bull. That's bull. What's the longest clean time you had? 11 months. What triggered you? I got with a girl that was, uh, said she was on suboxins, but she was doing heroin. And I, that's when I started doing heroin. Do you regret a lot of the decisions you made in your life? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some, some of the decisions you might think, that why did I, why'd I do that? But at the time, you didn't know. Right. You learn from your experiences. That's why I can't do nothing to my daughter. She got to learn. Like she got to learn from her experience. She's in jail right now. Probably the best place for her. At least she's safe. Right. Do you have any other family out here? Yeah, my brother just uh, my brother just got a pathway house up in Longdale, like literally like a week ago. Um, he was out here for f eight, nine years, something like that. We're kind of out here together. See yourself fighting to get your life back, or have you given up hope? Kind of haven't given up hope, but like I said, I do the math because it makes me function. So without it, you can't function. You can't live a normal life without the math. I, 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 that's what it feels like. That's yeah. what your mind is telling you. But you can live a normal life without the math. It's just that you've been doing it for so long, it has drawn roots into your brain. So yeah. you just think now, without it, you can't function. But yes, you can. But I just sleep. I'll sleep. I'll sleep five, six, seven days. That's what it does. Yeah. Uh, no joke. And then they say you don't hurt your body. That's, that's bull crap. Because I'd be up for days. And when I don't have it, my body aches. What do you do when you don't have it? Um, I go to a casino and like, there's like chains that people leave in the thing. That's my little hustle. I'll go down there and I'll take the change out, play a game, come up like $20, cash out, boom. Then I'm on my way. What is it like being homeless in Kensington? No. Struggles. Struggles, uh, like eating, like getting something to drink. Um, it's rough out here, like, I mean, I get it, but sometimes I don't get, I might get one meal a day, maybe two. What do you do when you're having a bad day? Do meth. Huh? Do some meth. Just to numb the pain, right? Yeah. What advice would you give to people out there watching this video and thinking about coming down this road? Think, think twice about it, look. Just take a look at me and my story, man. What I went through, I'm 48 years old and... And that's young. Yeah, and I'm gray. It's taking a toll on my body, I'm ran down. I've been doing it since I was a kid. A kid that shouldn't have been doing it. It's getting cold out here, man. Winter time is coming. What's your game plan? I go, uh, I'll stay at my brother's pathway house. He ain't supposed to have people there, and I got some other friends. I'll jump. You know what I mean? 
I'll jump in and out, maybe sleep in a tent or something with some sternos to keep it. surviving. That's the <clears throat> Do you want to live life or do you want to keep on surviving? I want to live life. to do to live life right you have to go through the, the process the detox process the rehab process are you I've, ready for that i've done it 30 times what is it that makes you keep on you know quitting i don't know because i'm on i'm on meds too prozac because i got ptsd because i was molested as a kid like I'm sorry and uh i still don't know what it is sometimes the prozac helps the because my mind's going 100 miles a minute and it's everywhere scattered oh it clicked in my head man i i od's like eight times i tried it every way snorting it shooting it trying five units of 20 20 units shot and i died every way and i said to myself i i don't want to die it's like i got got a daughter i got two grandkids like I mean, my daughter's not doing much, but I, at least I want to see my grandkids do something, you know what I mean? My sister is adopting my granddaughter, and my grandson, he has no clue who I am. He's seen me before. I might need to, to do a whole mental evaluation with myself, like get a uh, therapist and talk to her and do the recovery. I really don't want to be in a shelter, to tell you the truth. Why not? It's just, I don't know. There's a lot of things that I can't, like a lot of people got hustles out here, like they steal. <laughs> and I can't do none of that. I'm not, for some reason, I'm just scared to, I can't steal a candy bar. <laughs> so if I'm hungry, I have to go to somebody and humble myself and say, yo, I'm hungry, do you have something to eat? Way, yeah, I'm not used to that though. I'm used to fending for myself. Right. But when you're in this life, you're no longer yourself anymore. You're somebody different now. Yeah, that's very true. You're not the same person. I I, I say when I do math, I, I'm Clark Kent, and hmm. but when I do math, uh -huh. I turn into Superman. Hmm. So it's like it makes me a whole different person than I. Because I'm usually quiet, I don't talk. So what's a typical day in your life look like? Huh? Well, running around in Kensington, homeless, doing meth, trying to find something to eat. Uh, trying to get a shower. How often does that happen? What do you take? Do you, how often do you take showers? Uh, every couple of days. Is it easy for you to find a place to take a shower? Yeah, like I said, I got some... I still got friends around, like, but they won't let me live with them because I get high. Like, it's because they don't want to accommodate your addiction. And I've been offered my own businesses and everything from my friends. They'll help me out, and so, I still do the same thing. I think I'm scared of money. Huh? Scared of having money. Scared of having money. That's the root of all evil, right? Yeah, it's that's what. Uh, is your trigger? Money is your trigger. It's probably my trigger. Cause when I have it, I want to get high, and I don't ask me why. It's just like in that, and I got a gambling problem. So, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Who knows, man? I probably, hopefully, somewhere, but probably still out here. I don't know. I don't know what's going through my head, but I, I might need some like different meds or something. What do you think needs to be done in Kensington to help people who are struggling? What do you think the solution is to this problem? Well, instead of instead of thinking that we're just pieces of shit, like try and help, offer a hand. Like my daughter was out here too; she gets hot. I came out here and got started getting hot too because I never had my parents do that for me when I was out here. And then, that's what I wanted. What's your short-term goals, man? Uh, 
try, try and stay off the mess, the meth as much as possible. Uh, probably get a job. My granddaughter, my sister's got my granddaughter. She's adopting her, so I get to see her every once in a while. I want her to know me. She deserves to know you. She deserves to know her. She looks just like her do her mom. It's crazy. Drugs are so evil, man. It takes everything away from you. So what all have you lost due to your addiction? Uh, I lost three houses. Cars. Relationships. That's a lot, right? You lose basically everything. The only thing you haven't lost yet. Lost my soul. <laughs> Pretty much. You still got your life, though. So yeah. hopefully you can fight, man. So we have had to wrap, up, wrap things up. What do you want the world to know about you? I'm just not, like... I do have some morals, and I, and I do care. And just because I do drugs doesn't mean that I'm any different from anybody else. And what we're here to do is to help another human being. And then not a lot of people are doing that, so. Well, thank you for helping save the future generation by sharing your story, but that's what we're trying to do, prevent future tragedies from happening. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in this world who judge people who are struggling with addiction. What's your message for the world? Man, get it. stay off the streets, get it. Go to a rehab, go to NA, AA, whatever works for you. Work the steps, get a sponsor, and be well on your way. It works if you work it. What message do you have for your friends and your family who end up seeing this video? Um, hopefully, <laughs> in five years, I'm not out here. Hopefully, I am sober, and I got my business, and. I'm doing okay. So, Mark, is there anything you're in need of that we can help you with? Uh, all right, a house. No. <laughs> a house. House? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mark wants a house. Well, hopefully, a miracle can happen. I believe in miracles, guys. Mark wants a house. A miracle can happen. AML family, drop all the positive comments you got for Mark, and we'll stay connected with him. He's now part of the AML family. And we'll you know, keep him in our prayers. So remember guys, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there, peace out.